cryptocurrency has become a big deal, especially recently. Is there right. a difference between cryptocurrency and CBDCs or is it the Absolutely. same? Absolutely. There is a difference. I'm not a crypto expert, but it seems to me crypto is the prototype. It's, it's doing several things. Nothing these technocrats do has a singular purpose. Everything they do has multiple purposes, multiple layers to it. So when you know where they want to go, right? Mm -hmm. If we didn't have Bitcoin or any of these other cryptocurrencies, would anybody accept or even understand what a CBDC is? No. No. So it's indoctrination. Where did Bitcoin come from? It's not the Japanese dude nobody's seen. You know how I know this? Oh. The NSA wrote a white paper in 1996 on how to make a mint in cryptocurrencies. Wow. I have the document. Putting it, it out there. From, it came from the NSA. That should tell you something. Okay. And a lot of these companies like PayPal and all that, they all came from DARPA, which is the CIA hedge fund in QTEL. The, the Department of Defense and CIA. Yeah. So crypto, crypto, it's doing a couple things. It's definitely indoctrinating people into digital type currencies. Okay. Getting you trained into thinking this is a good thing, but it's also a setup. If you look at FTX and what recently happened with FTX and it imploded, and that technically I don't think was a cryptocurrency. It was more of like a, uh, what do they call it? Like a I don't know, it's some kind of market for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know the term. Anyways, so FTX was taken down on purpose because Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, is on record stating in the United States, CBDC cannot come to fruition and be controlled by the Federal Reserve without legislation by Congress. And John Titus literally did a video on this uh, the day after Thanksgiving, and he walked you through the law. He actually held up the law that it is not legal tender. Mm. They have to get legal tender status, legislation through Congress, in order to issue a Federal Reserve CBDC. But now, look at FTX. What did everybody come out, all the politicians come out and say when FTX imploded? Well, we got to regulate this. We have to control it in some way. We have to regulate it. Well, what it, what's the regulation? Mm -hmm. Is it going to regulate like you can't do the do it the way they did it, or is the regulation giving the Fed control? They collapsed it on purpose. They mm -hmm. set it up and they collapsed it on purpose. So, would you recommend not getting involved with cryptocurrency? I can't recommend. I can't give advice, but I wouldn't touch it. Yep. <laughs> not with a 10 foot pole i don't think so no i'd rather barter mm -hmm. yeah so uh, speaking of bartering um do you think that returning to the gold standard or an asset backed currency is the best solution to cbdc's i don't know if it's the best solution um we certainly need to get back to real money that's not debt-based mm -hmm. whether it's backed by any kind of asset doesn't matter i guess uh, maybe you want it, want it backed by something um you know, currently the, the world runs on a two-tier debt-based monetary system. The central banks print reserves. The reserves go into the commercial banks like Bank of America's account. Bank of America then prints bank money, which goes into the circulation into the population, right? That's the two system. And John Titus is, if you watch his videos on his best evidence, no space, one word, best evidence YouTube channel. He explains it in plain English, and I like his approach because he's he was a trial lawyer. He was a patent lawyer, right? Like would go after pharmaceutical companies for patents or defend them in some cases. And so he comes at this banking stuff from a trial lawyer and shows you the law, shows you the source documents, shows you their own testimony, their own words, their own articles, whatever, quotes, and, and, and looks at their body language because he's a trial lawyer. So I, I like the way he presents stuff. Um, and ironically, somebody sent me this the other day. Remember the coin shortage during COVID uh, or right yeah. before? Yeah, where it's, there's a national coin shortage. He did a 10 minute video that shredded that argument completely. The US Mint printed more coins than they had ever printed. 
Why was every store telling you that they were out of coins? The economy was slowed down. You should have more coins, not less. Right. The Mint printed more coins than ever. He interviewed, he got saw an interview with the head of Coinstar, the you know, the little machine you can put your coins into. Oh yeah, business is booming. So where'd the coins go? The Federal Reserve has to buy the coins at cost from the Treasury. The Federal Reserve did not distribute them to the commercial banks. So they kept them. Yep. War on cash. To slowly cycle out the coins. Yep. Wow. And now we don't really hear anything about a coin shortage as much, or at least not as often. Right. So do you think we will again, or do you think they're going to continue to try different stunts like that? Oh, they'll keep trying stunts. I don't know how it'll morph, but mm -hmm. they're up to something, that's for sure. Just like this whole green thing, right? So this is how you know it's a grift. Whether you believe the climate change scientists on the UN side or the other ones that the documentary I saw, it doesn't matter. Here's how you know it's a grift. Everybody would agree on both sides of this argument would agree that these big ag corporations and big chemical corporations have been poisoning the soil, right? Mm -hmm. The food and the soil. Everybody would agree to that. Glyphosate is not good right. for anything, anybody or anything. And they've been doing this for almost 100 years. You can read the book Silent Spring, which was written in like 1960 by Rachel Carson that, that documented this stuff. Okay, it's been going on a long time. Now... You read the, the documents from the UN or the Bank of International Settlements or whoever, and they're all saying, we have to go back to replenishing the soil, regenerative farming. Were they all benevolent overnight? Right. It's the same corporations are now telling us the opposite. Mm -hmm. That's how you know it's a scam. Especially when it, it reminds me of when all of the food um corporation or the food processings were catching on fire and blowing up yeah. all the time that definitely wasn't a coincidence no it was not and if you go read the documents from the coalition i think it's the coalition for 30 by 30 or something like that um i read this from i found the something called a blue bond so i found it i didn't know what a blue bond was i looked it up belize has this blue bond so this is the debt trap that the World Bank, the, the BIS, the World Bank, and the IMF, they all work together, okay? The IMF loans money to these countries, typically based in uh, current denominated in dollars, not the local currency. When they get into trouble, the World Bank comes in and rescues them, but takes the assets, right? And the BIS funnels the money between the three, okay? So that they all work in coups. So this blue bond, they had a, like a case study. <laughs> it's a PDF. <laughs> So Belize had like $560 million in U.S. dollar denominated debt, million or billion, might be billion, I don't know. They couldn't pay it. Why couldn't they pay it? Because the Federal Reserve Bank of New York drove the value of the dollar higher, which means if you're Belize, a country, you have to take your currency, more of it, to buy the dollars because the dollars are now more expensive, mm -hmm. okay, and get the dollars to pay the debt. That's the debt trap. So in comes the rescuing World Bank, and they, this was the deal. Belize, we will give you a 45% discount on how much debt you owe. Why would they do that? Well, in return, you are going to put set aside 30% of your ocean fisheries into conservation. It says it. That was the deal. Then I find later this 30 by 30, which I had never heard of, and you go read their documents, and they want the entire planet to set aside 30% of their ocean fisheries into conservation and 30% of their agricultural land into conservation. And they literally say, this is great for farmers because the value of your farmland will go higher and the value of your products, i.e. food, will go higher. Well, that makes yeah. sense why they're paying them to stop producing and then their land is shooting up so they're able to sell it to the same companies. That plus they're issuing, they're giving them carbon credits. They're paying them with carbon credits created out of thin air by Wall Street banks 
Well, interesting that 30 by 30, you can go look the Biden administration. I think it was last year initiated some 30 by 30% of the land uh, into conservation goal target. It didn't come from the Biden administration. It came from the unelected people running the world. Right. It just, you know, thinking about it, it, it's so frustrating because it is always an unelected bureaucrats, whether that's in South Carolina or whether that's on the federal level or a different state. Um, at even the local level, there is a way to where they control it somehow in some way. We right. seem to have more power on the local level, but if you just look at the federal, Why is that? Because is it because they haven't fully grasped all of the communities yet? They still have the local. I personally think local politicians, they're, they live locally. Mm -hmm. They are in the community. The last thing they want is somebody showing up at their house with pitchforks. That's true. They are hold, held more accountable. Absolutely. So I think by educating officials that they don't know about it or the local community to a point organically, to a point where people will be getting in their face, not violently, but right. getting in their face and saying, hey, this is not good for the community. This is not good for humanity. You've got to do something about this. Whether they can or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But at least put it out there. And using cash, vote with your wallet. Mm -hmm. You can just say no to all this. We have and a choice collapses. in everything. It's the convenience that people tend to debate on. But I have seen as I have slowly gone from supporting larger corporations with my money to supporting the community, it's a lot easier when you do it slowly but surely. And you can get to the point of being self-sustainable. But I think people yep. need to realize that they have to take the first step. They do. And turning off the media. Mm -hmm. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, what your ideology is, turn off the news, turn off the media. They're not telling you anything. And if they do tell you anything, it's 50% or it's two years too late. You know, I mean, this stuff's been around for a long time. Have you ever heard any, any journalist in the regular media tell you about technocracy? No. They're just now starting to talk about central bank digital currencies once in a while. Maybe. But I think that's more to uh, naturalize it with everyone and right. make it seem like it's But they're normal. not telling you what's really going on. And it, when you turn them off, it's so negative, you don't realize the weight of the stress that lifts. And it frees you up to then go learn and educate yourself and build the local community, like you said, with local business people and local farmers. That's what people need to do. And if enough people do it, this stuff will fall on its face. I personally cannot figure out how they're going to do this on a global scale and not somebody is not going to play along. There's going to be a lot of infighting. There already is. There's going to be, a, how are they going to do it? I just, I don't know how they're going to do it. And maybe that's the answer. Maybe they know they're not going to do it. Okay. But they can get further down the field with all this technology to track data and all this stuff. And maybe they, they their plan is to shut the trap door on technocracy in the next generation or your kids, you're young, your kids generation. Cause these people think in generational terms, they don't think in five, 10 years, they think I'll get the next generation. They, and they're all eugenicists too. All of them. They want to depopulate the planet. It's easier and to control that way. It, well, it's less resource use because they're scared to death of the resources going, you know, going away or not being enough. You know, you look at, don't just look at the, 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 the injections, the recent injections. Yeah, that's killed a lot of people and maimed a lot of people and will continue to do so over the next three to five years. But so were the previous injections. Look at the injection, the vaccine schedule and what it's done since the 1986 Act, giving the pharmaceutical companies immunity, right? It's, it's crazy. It's gone from like 17 to 72 or some crazy number. But look at the globally, look at the fertility rates, look at the birth rates. They are way down. So again, they're thinking in terms of generations like, okay, two generations from now, the birth rate's going to be so low. We will slowly depopulate the earth 
and it's it gives us plausible not deniability nobody's going to be able to point the finger at us yeah if i walk into a store and shoot somebody in the head dead obviously you can say i did it like you look at these injections and if people start dying two three four years from now from cancers that were caused by the nobody's going to be able to connect the dots right you can you can assume you can speculate but you can't prove it and it's been happening for decades but we're only seeing right. it getting worse right so it's interesting that you mentioned on the global scale, because it, for me, when I'm thinking about CBDCs, it's hard for me to wrap my head around how this is going to work on a global set, a scale. I know yesterday, Nigeria limited cash withdrawals to $45 a day in order to implement these CD, CBDCs. So do you see that? Do you think that'll happen here? Or do you think that's going to last in Nigeria? Or is it just? Prepping? You better wake up. People better wake up. That was a giant wake-up call. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go back to Cyprus in 2008-9. When the, the banking system was collapsing, the, banking, the whole banking system in Cyprus was closed for 12 business days. That's called a bank holiday. You were limited to cash withdrawals of 300 bucks or something like that in ATMs. That's it. When it reopened, every deposit was taxed. You had a thousand bucks in there. You were taxed, I think, four or five percent. You had a million dollars in the bank. Anything over a hundred grand was taxed at ten percent. So now that that's what your your nine hundred went to eight 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 ten, eight hundred ten grand plus the hundred thousand at the like FDIC limit level, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then that same eight hundred ten thousand got an eighty percent haircut. So you only had twenty percent of it which is 160 grand plus the hundred that was protected. So your million went from a million to 260. That's called a bail in, not a bail out. There, when you put money in the bank, you're an unsecured creditor. That was Cyprus. After that, every Western country enacted the same legislation, including the United States. We had the same laws. Now, let's look at Nigeria. A year ago, in 2021, they rolled out their Nigerian CBDC. The central bank did, okay? But if you read the article, I think there's like 80% uh, of the population doesn't even have a bank account. Um, and 30% of the population has some form of cryptocurrency use somewhere. So really, they're trying to get people to you know, the, the ones that use cash, that 80% that has cash at home, right? The community type banking, not, not the banking banking. And so they rolled out the CBDC a year ago. A year later, only 0.5% of the population had signed up for it. So they didn't do it voluntarily. So now the bank comes out and says, okay, it's mandatory. Hmm. Is it mandatory? We're going to make it so hard for you to get your cash. And oh, by the way, if you do take out more than that limit, there's a fee. So it's going to cost you money. In other words, according to the Bank of International Settlements documents, we have to voluntarily socially engineer and manipulate people into doing it. And when they don't do it, and we have to do it through corporations. And when they, when they don't do it, we have to force them. How is that a wake-up call here? Absolutely, that can happen here. Will it tomorrow or next year? No, but it can. It better. What's what's so you look at the risk reward, right? The banks are paying you nothing in interest, right? The only the only pro to having your money in a bank is that you don't have to protect it at home, right? Because if you have it at home in a safe or whatever, you get robbed, it's gone. In a bank, it's not. That's the only pro. Otherwise, the bank goes under, you lose your money. The bank holiday comes, you can't get your money. The CBDC gets pushed like Nigeria, you can't get your money. The risks are all on us, not the bank. So when you see this... If there's an ability, uh, if there's a possibility for it to be implemented, 
do you, you see that happening at the end of this generation or the next or what's your prediction? Know. You don't know. Yeah. I, I know the CBDC behind the scenes architecture is not ready. Mm -hmm. I know this because the Bank of International Settlements literally just completed a three year study on how I think they had three countries over in Southeast Asia and how they would work. The CBDCs would work together with the different laws and the different regulations and the different currencies. They That was a, a, a test. And they finished that one. They're starting another one next year that's supposed to run through 2025. They're not ready. It may be another, you know, late 2020s. So maybe 27, 8, 9, it might be ready. 2030, it might be ready, but it's not ready now. Mm -hmm. and, and you look at each individual current country has to get their own CBDC first so that the, then the Bank of International Settlements can have the not the global CBDC that controls all the other CBDC. And the difference between retail and wholesale is no different than the debt-based monetary system where the Federal Reserve prints reserve dollars. That would be the wholesale system. And the bank, the commercial banks print uh, like bank money that you and I use. That would be the retail system. Okay. So we would have a, a retail CBDC and the bank, commercial banks would have a wholesale CBDC with the Federal Reserve. So the banks are still the intermediary. And aren't they trying something like that now in the European Union? It's all over the world. They're testing this stuff. Yeah. All right. So the best ways to protect ourselves from it, I guess, is using cash, like you were saying earlier, using a community bank and getting involved. Well, I want to go into something else, too, yeah. besides the Nigeria. The reason it's a huge wake-up call.